Hey guys, how's it going? Anthony Motoj here back with a new video lesson for y'all. Yes, I did screw that up. Apologies, I can't remember the whole thing. I even remember saying that in a previous video. Anyway, in this lesson, we're going to take a look at that particular groove towards the end. It's one of the Jaco staple grooves. And it's also something he used in his solos as well. Um, in particular uh, on Havona where he goes so that shape he uses it quite a bit that pentatonic with that blues note thrown in right so what I like about this groove the way he played it um, on that instruction video of his is how he plays a fill and then he builds a groove based on the fill which I find very interesting but anyway the funny thing about that whole clip is how it's just grooving all the way from the first note it's just so groovy so if you haven't checked that out that video or if you haven't tried playing it I would recommend you do that I'm only going to break down this one because there's a lot going on there uh, but with very minimal number of notes for the left hand technically speaking okay so before we actually get to that fill so it's this pentatonic shape so you need those notes Okay, so the lowest note you're going to play is a G sharp and the highest note is a B. Okay, so it starts off with the Okay, so in its basic form Okay, so one thing I'm not exactly sure about um, is this bit or yeah I think it's the second one yeah okay however you still see me kind of fret that D over there but that's purely for a ghost note effect okay so the ghost note makes up majority of this groove so from a basic point of view again so get that right get that sounding good okay and then add a ghost note at the beginning over here so groovy right so that bit is tricky okay 
Okay, what's tricky about this is trying to keep those ghost notes there but not here in your face. That's why they call ghost notes. Um, they are meant to be in the background. They fill up that 16 note grid. It gives it that pocket, but it shouldn't be at the front. It shouldn't be dominant in the sound or the groove. Because if I did that, everything would sound flat. I can't even play that. I'm trying to force my fingers to play those ghost notes loud. I can't. Okay, so basic form. Goes on the top. Now the whole thing. Okay, now I want to quickly talk about that D that we are kind of fretting but getting a ghost note effect and why you might think why am I fretting there, fretting that note if I'm not playing it. I kind of do that when I play just to get my fingers in that right motion and momentum because if I didn't fret that, um, it feels a little awkward for me physically speaking. I prefer to move. Because it's pretty much kind of got that sound. Right? So he isn't doing... He did... So... I believe he does the same thing, or he did rather. Um, the way he approached ghost notes overall and used them in his grooves, you could see all his, all his four fingers, the fretting fingers were always present, but it didn't mean they were always constantly fretting something. They took care of something or the other. So even this first ghost note, technically, it's a D actually. But we quicken, we deaden that note just to get that effect out. Because if I emphasize the D versus very different. So very important to keep the ghost notes here and the main notes up there. If you feel like the ghost notes are too quiet, then you can crank it up, but don't ever bring it too close or at the same level. Okay, this is one of the many things that made Jaco Jaco his control of ghost notes regardless of the groove, regardless of speed. All that stuff is not easy. Okay, ghost notes here, main notes here. I hope you guys get something out of this and I'll see you guys with the next lesson pretty soon. Peace.